what's going on everybody welcome back to vinyl syndrome as always i'm rich and as always thanks for coming and checking my ass out you know i appreciate it um before we get started tonight uh, i just want to give a quick little shout out to another fellow uh, youtuber mr uh, grim trash can he's having a little uh contest uh 333 subscribers um he's having a little giveaway he's giving away uh, some music i'm um, a vinyl album he's also giving away uh, two pins um one of them is a uh, melvin's pin i believe that one's a uh, church burning pin he's also giving away a uh, a card or a sticker, I believe it's a card with the Alibi Pin logo on it. It's also signed by uh, Mr. Whitehead himself as well. So, uh, you know, go check out his channel, enter in that fucking contest. Cool little uh, giveaway there. Um, go subscribe. Uh, he also does, you know, uh, vinyl updates and stuff. He does that, if you will, uh, first person shooter view, if you will, the same thing as our uh, pitch control, where, you know, he does the down look as he's showing off his uh, vinyl, what have you. Uh, Definitely awesome. I enjoy that uh, very much. Um, so yeah, I go uh, check out his channel, enter in his contest, you know, subscribe to him. He's trying to you know get his subscribers and all that stuff. But I'm always happy to help out, uh, you know, fellow YouTubers any way I can. You know, we're a family. We gotta stick together. God damn it. But uh, in the background here, if you guys can hear that. Moving on here, uh, we got the newest by Childish Gambino here. Of course, uh, Waking My Love. I mean, this is guys. This this is very 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 good. Um, Never heard this was coming out. I'm a big uh, Childish Gambino fan, especially since his last album, that was the Internet. I mean, I just, I just fucking love that album. Everything about that album is just phenomenal to me. Um, and whenever I heard the shift that you know that he took on this album, I was very excited. So I didn't want to really listen to anything off this until I got it. And um, wow, you know, that's all I can say. Uh, for any Gittins guys, you know, familiar, of course, about Childish Gambino, um, multi-talented man. He, he, dips his toes in a lot of water. Um, just on top of music, he also, you know, um, of course, writes for multiple uh, TV shows. Uh, also acts, does uh, stand-up too. He always kind of like, you know, <laughs> maybe like a little modern day, you know, renaissance man. Just a uh, very talented man. Um, and uh, for any of these guys, you also might not be the biggest uh, hip-hop fans. This album is actually not a hip-hop album at all. Um, this is a big homage to some R&B, uh, a lot of 70s vibe thrown in there. Um, Sometimes you know, like maybe a little uh, gospelish stuff mixed in there too as well. Um, just a lot going on with this that is just very, very good. Um, I can't say again enough of good thing uh, things about this. Uh, what I will say is though that our fellow YouTuber on uh, Mike C Town, of course, his other channel on uh, Dead and Hip Hop, I thought they did uh, a phenomenal take on this album. Um, I just watched it a little while ago. Um, I seen it was up. I didn't want to uh, watch it until I, you know, I listened to the album. Definitely listen to the album. I heard you know all them guys go around and give their opinion on it. Just everything they said again was spot on. Everything about uh, you know, a familiar artist you can pick out that you hear on this. Anything from you know Sly and the Family Stone, which you know I have back here for that reason. Um, it's 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 just all in there, and it's just it just sounds so good. Um, again, the sound ain't really too modernized. Has that older feel to it. Like it's 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 just definitely worth checking out. Um, just phenomenal tracks on this. Uh, the one track that is very weird, uh, California. It's definitely a weird track. I don't know why, but every time, the couple times I listen to this track, it puts me for some strange reason. I don't know why. It just makes me think I'm Margarita Bill. I don't know why. He does like this weird uh, singing on this, where it's kind of like sounds like he's like uh, Charles Camus, kind of like he's like holding his breath. He's trying to like sing. It just sounds very weird. But just the music in the background, uh, just a very like upbeat and happy. <laughs> for some reason, it reminds me of some Margarita Bill. Again, I don't know why, but it just does. But yeah, it's just a weird little uh, breakup track in there. But other than that, uh, I guess I'm not saying it's really a bad track. It's just it's just different to that how the album flows. But other than that, yeah, this is definitely an awesome, awesome album. Definitely one of the uh, better albums of the year, in my opinion, so far just from listening to this. I mean, it, this, this is, I was just completely blown away by this. So any of these guys, like I said, even ain't, ain't fans of rap, like I said, this is not a hip-hop album at all. There's no rapping on this whatsoever. This is strictly, again, a homage to some just some good, awesome 70s R&B, just love all over this. So again, uh, guys, highly recommend checking this out. Just phenomenal listen by this, man, so... Getting that out there, newest challenge, Childish Gambino album. All right, moving on here. Sorry, it's the weekend, having a little, uh, having a little drinky poo here. All right, moving on to the next one, album. I was looking for it for a long time. For some strange reason, I can never find a uh, good copy of it. Every time I find a copy of it, the uh, vinyl I always beat the hell up. But find a copy of it where the vinyl's in good condition, but the uh, the cases just beat the hell up. But I don't care as long as the vinyl's in good condition. Uh, this is uh, Miles Davis, man, Bitches Brew. Just classic electric jazz album by the, you know, one of the masters, if not the master, Miles Davis. I uh, goes the front, 
There goes the back uh, gatefold here. There we go. Again, uh, double LP, standard black, not really not special about that. But yeah, again, it's the phenomenal, phenomenal goddamn electric jazz. Um, for any of you guys, you know, might not be the biggest jazz fans. I can understand, you know, you a lot of you know guys maybe watch us, you know, metal fans maybe more than anything and stepping from something extreme and going to you know something maybe as laid back as jazz is, you know, it can be a little tough on the air, you know, to jump into that. But you know, just dive in here and there, listen to some shit here and there, you know, hopefully it'll grow on you, man, because a lot of these guys are just masters of what they do, man, and it's not just, it's just a shame. I hope you know a lot of shit don't get you know lost in the pages of time, because a lot of this stuff is just some really good goddamn music, man. So it's like I can say about that. So uh, let's keep moving on. All right, on to the next one here. Uh, an album came out this year by a band that I'm very fond of. Um, this is uh, St. Paul and the Broken Bones. This is their newest uh, Sea of Noise. Again, uh, 2016, this came out on records. I uh, never heard of that label, but that's what it came out on. There goes the up front. There goes the back. Um, inside here, standard black vinyl, nothing special about that. Uh, insert here, just uh, just the tracks, uh, band members and stuff like that. Um, again, for any of these guys that might not be familiar with St. Paul and the Broken Bones, they are a band that mainly dives in R&B. Um, also, a little bit of some gospel in, in uh, some of their tracks as well. Blues uh, driven a lot too. Um, the thing I really love about their sound too is they incorporate a lot of uh, brass instrumentation, which I, you know, I love trumpets and shit like that. But to me, the standout, standout of this band, which I said again whenever I did, uh, again when I talked about their first album, is definitely uh, Mr. Paul Janeway, the lead singer. I mean, this man just has one of those voices. It just reminds me so much of something you might have heard, you know, back in like the good old days, like Motown and stuff like that. Just that voice just has so much feeling in it. Just, just you can just tell like this man is just putting. His whole emotion into every fucking thing he is saying in every song. And it is just, it's, it's, I don't know, to me it's just beautiful, it's very enjoyable, Again, his voice is just phenomenal to me. So, like I said, I'm uh, a big fan of these guys. Uh, St. Paul and the Broken Bones, you know, again, for any of these guys want to check out it, it's some nice R&B, with like I said, a little, little teeny bit of gospel flair and definitely some blues vibe. Yeah, definitely love that brass instrumentation that's in this as well. Uh, Check these guys out again, especially if you love some some vocal work. It just you know, a lot of emotion in it. Can't say enough about Mr. Paul Janeway. Just a great vocalist, man. All right, moving on to the next one. Uh, another album that came out this year. Um, this band been around forever. I'm not going to talk too much about this. Just happy to have it in the collection. Us uh, is the newest in the Melbourne. Space is loaded. Space is loaded. They hit it out of the park with a grand slam. Now it's just you know, uh, another typical Melvins album. Uh, it is good. You know, if you're a fan of Melvins. You know what to expect from Melbourne. They deliver, you know, that on every album, that, you know, stone or rock, doom driven, fucking nice little vibe, thick sound. Insert here, standard black vinyl, nothing special about that. But yeah, I'm a big Melbourne's fan, been for a long time. You know, the discography is so huge. Uh, there are side projects, uh, Buzzos and all, all the other side projects. But yeah, I'm just very happy to, add, you know, get another album from these guys. Happy they're still out, you know, making albums and stuff like that. So again, uh, Melbourne's bass is loaded. Another, uh, Kick ass album from those guys. Alright, moving on to the next one here. We got a nice little power violence album. This is a uh, white, white, uh, excuse me, white glove test, the name of the album. The name of the band is Iron Lung. Iron Lung, white glove test. It goes the front, it goes the back. Uh, this is a little uh, gatefold. Yes, it is. Here we go. Cool, uh, cool weird little artwork. Here we go. Uh, nothing special about the inside, I believe. Nope, standard black vinyl. Yes. We're gonna show that. Uh, we have here with um, Iron Lung is uh, this is a uh, two-piece again, a uh, power violence band from um, Seattle, Washington, and uh, they're not really like anything too spectacular, but what they do they do very well, especially for the, again being only a two-piece uh, power violence band. They just get in, get out, and kick ass. You know, just quick little tracks. Boom, hit you with it, get out, go to the fucking next one, boom, hit you over the head with it, get out, go to the next one, hit you over the head with it. Uh, times they do, they do feature some uh, actually catchy, nice little fucking uh, guitar work. You know, just, just not, they're not the whole time, of course, just, you know, blistering your fucking head in when I just fast riffing. They do take uh, a little bit of time to hit you with some melody here and there in a certain tracks. But uh, yeah, definitely a, a fun little, uh, again, awesome little two piece power violence band from uh, up in Seattle. So, any of you guys are familiar with uh, this band, definitely check out some uh, Iron Long uh, White Glove Test. Awesome little album, fun little album from the guys. Alright, move on to the next one. 
Uh, we got something. Um, I'm, I remember seeing this in the store, and I was like, the, the name of this artist just sounded so goddamn familiar. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna check this out. And then I got it home, and uh, I remember where I heard this from. I got a uh, compilation of all these uh, different bands from over in uh, France, from um, back in like the 70s and 80s. It's a whole bunch of um, dark wave. Uh, uh, synth rock uh, type of stuff like that but over in France at the time and uh, this artist here uh, Charles de Gaulle he was uh, featured on that and I remember uh, he was one of the if not the standout track that was on a compilation I really enjoyed so uh, that's probably why that name uh, stood out to me when I seen this um, this is actually a double album uh, this side is uh, Resistance the other side is uh, Mobilization and uh, with uh, Charles de Gaulle was again it's in that um, post rock he's in that post rock, rock slash uh, dark wave um, this is pretty much from um, uh, 70s, 80s uh, sound from again over there in France. Here goes uh, the one album, uh, Mobilization. Cool little uh, artwork there. Here goes the other side. I don't think there's anything special about the vinyl itself. I believe it's just standard black, yeah. And then uh, here goes the other album again. Cool little uh, artwork here, Resistance. Here's one side. Here goes the other again, standard black. Uh, yeah, this is this is definitely a uh, fun little album from uh, you know what was happening over there at the time in uh, again the 70s, 80s that uh, post rock slash uh, dark wave. It's I mean uh, post punk, excuse me, post rock, post punk slash uh, dark wave sound that was going over in uh, France at the time. Um, the only thing I wish it would have been more actually for my you know my taste a little more more dark wave in this. It didn't really do it. It's very done very well in my opinion. I just wish you know they would have done it a little bit more. But uh, I don't really can't complain. It's something just cool to check out. Uh, pretty much majority of the tracks are in French. There are a few odd uh, tracks in there that are in English, but uh, like I said, majority of it is in French. But uh, yeah, it's something different to check out. I guess I'm uh, Charles de Gaulle. Uh, a little uh, post punk slash you know dark wave or uh, over in France from back in the 70s, 80s. Definitely uh, worth checking out. All right, moving on to the next one. We got one of those weird, maybe I don't know if some of these guys dreaded three-way split album here. These are uh, three bands that dive in the um, black and folk sound. Uh, the only band that I was familiar with is because I got a couple of his uh, albums and I still don't know how to pronounce his name. I don't know if it's Wired or Weird. I always call them Weird. And uh, it features two other bands who I had no idea who it was. And if I looked them up, uh, apparently they don't really have too much out. They might only be featured on this, maybe another split. That's about it. But uh, here we go. Like I said, it's not a little uh, three-way split between, uh, I'm saying weird, because I never heard that, uh, his, that band's name pronounced before. And I'm not even going to try to pronounce the other two. Let's just get that up there real fast, friends, guys. Here we go. Again, all three of these bands, again, focus on that black and folk. Uh, very nice. Uh, very... Very, um, I want to say at times, kind of like peaceful. I mean, it, it, it kind of is. It gives you that feel a lot of times, like you're in the woods, um, you're walking by like a brook and shit like that. And then, then you know, whenever the black metal kicks in, you know, catch you shit as well, too. Uh, Standard Black, nothing real special about the inside here. But for me, out of all these bands on this uh, three way split, the last band, who again, the name I cannot pronounce, um, the two tracks they played the sea in the forest. Right down there at the bottom. This band really stood out to me. Uh, just those two tracks in general, again, Sea in the Forest, they got just such a great vibe with, with that. Again, the first track, feeling like that, you're walking around like in the forest with that folk metal that's being played. And um, it just, it, they just did such a good job of captivating both elements of the black and folk metal for me, this, this band. I, I, I hope they actually put out some more stuff. Like I said, as far as I know, uh, these two uh, other bands, besides, uh, you know, call them weird, uh, don't have really anything else out. But uh, yeah, this was, this was definitely an interesting and uh, well enjoyed little three way split by these guys. For, so, any of these guys want to check us out, you know, of course, always I put links below. You know, give us a little listen. If any of these guys like that uh, black and folk metal, definitely, definitely enjoyable shit on this. So, let's get that out there. Let's get it out there. All right, moving on to the next one. An album again that uh, came out this year, and a lot of people um, either really hated it or liked it. I guess I'm in the majority where I really fucking like this album. I'm missing the newest by Clipping, Splendor and Misery. There's the front, there's the back, uh, inside here, gives off that little uh, space vibe. Uh, standard black vinyl. Uh, for any of you guys ain't familiar with this album by any chance, um, or Clipping in general, uh, Clipping is that industrial hip hop band. Um, the previous album, Clipping Clipping, uh, was good. I enjoyed it. Uh, again, I'm. Um, fellow YouTuber, uh, Mike C. Time, that he hit it on the head and he was actually talking about um, 
that album a lot, their uh, previous album, Clip It Clipping. It's very enjoyable, especially the beats, the how the flows are, you know, awesome. It's just, the, you know, the content was on it, like a lot of trash, and you know, that just was not for me, you know, kind of had like that at times, you know, childish nature to it, if you will, I guess. But uh, this album is a total shift from that, where this album is completely telling a story about uh, a black slave that wakes up on a ship, and he realizes, you know, he's all alone on this black slave ship, except for him and his computer, and, you know, they're floating through space, but, and it just, it, I just really dug this. Uh, nothing, in my opinion, really corny or cheesy or anything on this. Just everything about this just, you know, flowed nice. Uh, it seems like the more listens you give this, the more uh, this, this actually gives. Um, at first, it wasn't, you know, the, the, the minimalness of this album. This album is very, very minimal and as far as, like, beats and all that shit goes. It's just, like, no banging album whatsoever. Uh, but I do enjoy that the sound that they do put on this with the industrialness it definitely gives you that feel that you are in space with the tings and the tangs at times you know the quietness um the sound sometimes like you know you're breathing through like oxygen mass or something sound and all that type of stuff just definitely this was definitely to me just i don't know it was a very very good album i just really like this album from uh, start to finish so again i uh, not much complaints about this i thought this was good by these guys so again uh clipping splendor and misery just uh the album i really enjoyed man because any of these guys that like uh Again, some industrial hip hop, and you know, especially albums that tell you know stories and have like a good like running theme through them. Check it out, you know what I mean? You might you might enjoy it, hey, you might not. All right, moving on to the next one here. Um, this is a band actually. Uh, I never find this, and I was digging. It's one of those bands again. I came across the uh, name, and then, like something clicked in my head. Now I remember I had an uh, EP from these guys, and it was just okay. It was uh, your, your standard, if you will, uh, run the mill uh, black and death metal. Uh, so I was like, you know what, I'm going to give this a little uh, chance. I mean, it was it was used in the used bin for only a couple bucks. So I was like, you know, I'm going to give it a chance. Um, this is um, Church Bazaar, and the name of the album is uh, Sinister Glorification. This is actually out on uh, House Headbangers. I'm not sure what year this came out. But uh, yeah, this is their only LP, as far as I can remember. Uh, Church Bazaar are from Denmark. Again, they play that uh, black and death metal. They rely a lot on uh, melodic riffing and uh, catchy song structures, you know, to really uh, pull their sound off. Um, what else was fascinating, I thought about this song, I was listening to it uh, from start to finish, showing between each tracks. It has a lot of the, uh, actually, not a lot, the whole uh, album has uh, clips from the movie The Ninth Gate, you know, with um, Johnny Depp, where he's at. Guys going around trying to find the box for that guy to try to, you know, complete the book to summon the devil or something like that. It's been years since I've seen it, but, uh, yeah, I just thought it had a cool little element to the album. Plus, uh, the lyrical theme on it, you know, kind of stuck in with that, too, you know, the Satanism and all that stuff, too. So it added, you know, more of an enjoyable list to it. But, uh, the most I can really give off with this is just, you know, it's very catchy, the guitar work. So, I mean, these guys, you know, love catchy ass black and death metal guitar work. Should definitely love this. I mean, like I say, I put this on a lot just for that reason because the, just the guitar work for me is just like so fucking fun to listen to. It just it gives off that catchy ass vibe. Um, nothing real special about the inside, but you know, you might have noticed this has like a cool little feature about this album where um, the front of it actually like opens up to look like like a little gate, which I thought was pretty cool because again, you know, it's playing also with that theme with the ninth gate, so you know, but you know, that was pretty awesome. But again, I. Uh, Church Bazaar, uh, Sinister Glorification. Just a fun one again. Uh, album with these uh, Denmark uh, black and death metalers. Just a guy again, a catchy little uh, album. So, uh, any of these guys ain't familiar with Church Bazaar, can I give them a listen? Again, definitely very catchy guitar work. Alright, moving on to the next one here. We got uh, a band everybody's familiar with. Uh, death metal band, uh, Incantation. This is our tribute to the goat. Oh, that's stuck there. Here we go, Incantation, tribute to the goat. Goes the front, goes the back. This is uh, came out in 2016, Season of Mist. This is not limited to 666 copies. I got number uh, 339. There we go. Uh, basically, what this is, for any of you guys you know, might not be familiar with this, uh, is a collection of you know a lot of older, you know, awesomer tracks. Uh, this is actually, if you want, will one of those uh, albums that's considered maybe a uh, live album, even though it wasn't recorded, you know, in live, you know, audiences and, and stadiums or anything like that. It was recorded in a studio. Uh, the sound quality on it is awesome. You won't even know, you know, if you will, that this was pretty much considered if you were a loose based, you know, live album. Uh, what also I thought was awesome about this is uh, the bonus uh, 1999 demo tracks they uh, added onto this. Uh, Devour, Death, uh, and Tra Entrapment, excuse me, of Evil, uh, Eternal Torture, and uh, Profanation. Just, uh, you know, some killer ass fucking shit from, you know, classic, you know, death metal band. Uh, nothing real special with the vinyl itself. Has a little insert here with some awesome little uh, liner notes and shit. Here we go. So yeah, just uh, happy to have this, you know, into the incantation collection. 
So there we go, guys. Any of you guys interested in this, you know, jump on. Like I said, uh, as far as I know, 666 copies available. So, tribute to the goat incantation. Oh, my jam. All right, uh. I love this fucking song. I love how to pitch of his voice. All right, moving on to the next one. This is actually the last one, guys, for this update. Uh, phenomenal fucking, uh, black and death metal album for me, man. This album for me is fucking just killer. I was happy to get a copy on of this, uh, across any format, but getting on vinyl, you know, it's extra fucking cool. Uh, this is, uh, Acre, I believe it's Acrecock or Acrecocky to go to Mendez. There's the front. There goes the back. Uh, gatefold here. A uh, couple more little babies in there real quick. There we go. Uh, double LP, standard black, nothing special about this. Again, uh, Acrecocky, man, just do such a phenomenal goddamn job. Of that uh, black and death metal sign. I mean, they fucking they just get in there. They're brutal with it. Fucking the guitars are, are fucking catchy at times. Fucking crushing at times. They add those nice little solo solos in there, and that you know they're not really over fucking staying. They're welcome. They're, you know they're kind of short but to the point, but fucking at the same time catchy. Very fucking enjoyable. Uh, drum work very fucking tight in the pocket clutch. Uh, the other thing I really really love about this is the vocal work, man. The fucking vocalist for this band does a phenomenal job with the death metal deep guttural growls and then getting up with the real high pitch black metal vocals that are just uh, phenomenal as well too. And on certain tracks he has a little bit of clean vocals in there uh, and I want to say it would be one or two other tracks as well with some clean vocals. He gets up there pretty high with almost like uh, operatic vocal work. Kind of when I first heard it uh, put me kind of in mind of my first hearing this uh, of some, a little bit of some Bork Nagar but like no nowhere over the top you know it's like Bork Nagar likes to do it like I said in this Oh, it's only I featured very minimal, like I said, maybe only uh, one or two tracks. But yeah, um, this is just a phenomenal album of these guys. Uh, as they progress more in their career, they got a little bit more, um, if you will, progressive metal. Uh, it's a little bit in here too, as well, but this is not a progressive metal album. Like I said, it's just strictly more a death slash, you know, black metal fucking hard fucking hitting fucking just badass fucking album from start to finish. Uh, but yeah, you can just def definitely feel it a little bit of some that progressive metal vibe in there. It's definitely in there. Uh, but yeah, for me, this was just, you know, their, I believe this might have been her second album. And this, this, I don't know, this is just always my favorite. So I'm just, I'm just happy to get a copy of this. You got some, uh, I hope I'm pronouncing the name right, some Acrecock, Acrecocky, one of the two, uh, Ghost of Mendez. Just a uh, phenomenal album by these guys. So any of these guys not familiar with these dudes, man, please check these fucking guys out, man. They're, 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 they're brutal, they're rough, they're awesome. They just have, they just do a good job of fucking just putting out a good fucking vibe, good atmosphere. And again, the lyrical content to this album, uh, is based on three things. Sex, Satanism, and nuns. So, you know, if you like any one of those three things, all those things combined together, that album is definitely going to be for you again. Sex, Satanism, nuns. Can't go wrong with that. So, uh, that's going to do for this update. Guys, I uh, hope, you know, again, to find something to enjoy. That's the main thing I like doing here. Um, again, go check out uh, Mr. Grim Trash Can. Go enter his contest. Try to win some awesome shit. Subscribe to his channel. Help him, you know, Get a subscriber base build up. You know, that's what it's all about, baby. Being nice, sharing, getting a lot about there. Especially during Christmas, because Christmas is right on the corner. So, uh, it's probably going to be my last video I do before until, you know, after Christmas. So, hope all you guys, you know, to celebrate Christmas and stuff out there. Uh, have a good one. You know, get all the shit you want in your list from Santa. Hope he squeezes his fat ass down your chimney and gives you all the music and music merchandise and everything these fucking guys want. So, uh, that's going to do it. You know, have a good one, guys. And always, rock on.